Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily make these plaster coaster bases and then how you can make them into beautiful resin coasters. Before we get started I just wanted to explain that in this project I'm using this silicon mould and I'm also using the largest cookie cutter in this set. Now you don't have to use cookie cutter, you can use anything round but it does need to be slightly smaller than the mould that you're using. I'll also be using this modelling clay. I just prefer this one but you can use any that you like and all links to all products will be in the description underneath. Right, so your first job is going to be to roll out some clay to about 5mm thickness. I'm using two acrylic blocks at the edges of the rolling pin just to make sure I have an even thickness all the way through. I'm just gently rolling to make sure I get a nice smooth surface. I'm just pressing down lightly onto the clay with the cookie cutter just to get a, a light guideline so I can see where my flowers need to go. I'm going to be using dried thistles and I'm going to lay them down really gently so that they don't make any marks on the clay and I can move them about as much as I like until I get the arrangement that looks good to me. Now that the flowers are in position I'm just going to use something larger than the size of the coaster just to press down firmly and make a good impression of those thistles. You need to make sure you're pressing it down with something larger than the circle because you don't want the, any lines in the clay from the edge of whatever you're using to push it down. I'm also trying it with some greaseproof paper because I didn't want the acrylic block to stick to the clay. Right, once those thistles have been nicely pressed down, you can gently remove them. I would start with part of the stem that's um, not within the circle because then you don't have to worry about getting your fingers in there to pick it up and you won't mark it with the ends of your fingers. And now I'm going to cut out the circle. You'll see that it's slightly within that first imprint that I made. And that's why I didn't cut down with the initial imprint because when you start pressing the flowers in, it distorts the clay. So I only wanted the first line to be a gentle line. And then once all the pressing's finished and done with, then you can cut it out and it, it, then you've got your perfect circle. After you've cut it out, it's good to just gently go around with your finger and smooth down any rough edges. There probably won't be very many, but it's always best to just check. Have a good close look and check that it's nice and smooth. And now I've taken my silicon mould and I'm just placing the clay inside. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing, believe it or not, because you need to get it absolutely central and that's easier said than done because you can't stick your finger in and move it around because you'll you'll cause an indentation on the side. So you've got to peel it out again and put it back in again if it's not quite central. I managed it on the second attempt. It's, it, it was just about central. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to tell until you see the finished result. And now I'm very, very gently pressing down on the edges, really gently. I don't want any fingerprints in there. The reason for it is so that when I pour the plaster into the mould, it's not going to seep underneath. 
So I've mixed my stone cast plaster in my silicon bowl. I like to use a silicon bowl because then any residue that's left you can just leave it to dry and it will flake off and go in the bin afterwards. The last thing you want to be doing is washing away any leftovers down the sink. And yeah I've mixed it up and I put the water in first and then the plaster. You can use regular plaster of Paris for this uh, but like if you've seen any of my other plaster videos you'll know that I prefer this just because it's so much stronger and actually it also seems to dry a lot quicker as well. I'm just pouring it in and I managed to just about make the perfect amount. It needs to be just above the clay, about I would say a millimetre above the surface of the clay. You don't want it too um, thin because it's more likely to crack when you take it out the mould if it's too thin. But yeah, I didn't want my coaster to be really thick. I like them to be delicate, so I went just above that clay. Once your plaster's all poured in, you need to give it a shake around really gently just to remove any bubbles that are trapped in there. It's quite an important step because there's lots of little places where bubbles could get trapped. After around half an hour, it'll be ready to be demoulded. And it, as you can see there, it pops out really easily. You just need to put it down and get a lollipop stick just to scoop kind of scoop out just a little bit and once you've got it started you can just peel the whole thing out there we go you see always use something wooden because you don't want to be scratching the plaster with something metal You can clean away any excess clay just with a soft toothbrush and some water. Here I'm just using an emery board just to tidy up that inner edge where the clay is just seeped under a tiny little bit. It comes off so e easily, especially if you do it when you've just demoulded it and it's still a little bit easier to file. It's not soft, it's, you know, it's not so soft that you can damage it, but it's soft enough to file it with ease it really is much better to do it straight away right so that was finished and i left it for a week i know it sounds like a long time and it is really but what i would suggest you do is make a lot of these all in one day put them aside let them dry and then on this when they're ready then you can paint them all and do the resin on the, that one day so before it's ready to be painted it's best if you seal it first with either PVA glue or polyurethane varnish. I do prefer the varnish just because it's a lot thinner and more delicate. It doesn't clog up any of the lovely details that you've created with the flowers. So I do prefer that and it dries quicker than PVA glue would as well. So yeah in about 20 minutes it's ready for painting. I won't talk you through all of the painting, I'm just, <laughs> you'll just get bored. I'm just going to speed it up and it's self-explanatory. Here I'm just adding another layer of varnish because what I wanted to do is have an attempt at putting some pigment powders in there to see what kind of effect that that would have and the best way to do that is to put some varnish down first and let it dry, it must be dry but once it's dry it's still got that slight tackiness and the um, pigment powders stick to it. But um, I've left it in just to show you but the effect was too subtle for what I was going for so I ended up painting over all of that.
using a mixture of acrylic paints for this and it's mostly um, Jacquard Lumiere acrylic paints uh, but any acrylic paint will do. I quite enjoy using the gold in there, it just gives it a little bit of an extra touch uh, but yeah, any acrylic paint will do. And then you can easily clean up the edges with a baby wipe or a household wipe. The last job is to paint the edges and the gold paint that I'm using is a really lovely gold but I do find that it takes about three layers to get a really nice uh, finish. The first layer makes it look like it's going to take forever but once you've got that first layer on and you let it dry the second layer goes on really nicely and yeah like I say I did three layers to get my finished result. And now my paint's dry and it's time to do the resin. Um, I'm using some petroleum jelly just on the underside uh, to protect it for, from any drips that happen to go down. And then the, the drips just pop off the bottom if you get any drips of resin. Anyway, here we are. I'm pouring the resin in and it's Ultracast XT resin. And I like to use that one because it's got a high heat resistance and it's really good for you know if you're putting a hot cup on there you can use regular resin um, but it can be have a tendency to leave a little bit of a mark on the surface when you put a cup on i have had i have made coasters a long time ago with art resin and the, the coasters i'm still using and they still look brilliant so don't worry if you can't get um the resin that I've got or one with a high heat resistance. It is best, but it's not essential. As you can see, it's gone really, really cloudy, that resin. And um, I did panic at first, <laughs> but the thing is, even though I put it in a heat bath, the bottles both in a heat bath beforehand because I knew it had been stored in a cold place. It's really cold here at the moment. Even though I'd done that, it still seemed to be having the effects of the cold. But what I did was after I'd poured it, I just about every two minutes I sat, I babysat it for a little while, about 10 minutes I sat next to it <laughs> and I just kept giving it a little bit of a um, heat over with my torch not too much because you will mark the surface it'll if it gets too hot you'll end up with marks but I, I just every two minutes I would give it another blast with the torch and all of those bubbles went after about four or five goes so once I'd got all those bubbles gone I just neatened up the edges with my fingers where it just um, dripped over the edges. You do want it to drip over the edges because you want those edges covered and protected but it might not be an even fl flow of resin going over the edges so what I do is I rub, rub around it with my finger and it just smooths it out and gives you a nice finish. And then I just covered it up with a cardboard box and left it for about four hours. To finish off the underside, just give it another coat of varnish, paint it and add some feet or a coat of varnish and some sticky backed felt. Here's another one that I made which I prefer so much more. It's so much easier to paint and do a good job of it when you're not recording it and worrying about camera angles. So yeah, that one did turn out much better. So we're all done. I hope this video was inspirational for you and I really hope you're going to have a go yourself. It is quite a lot of fun doing this method. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so already. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.